Well, this Safari Rally has certainly been something, so let's talk a little bit about it at the end of the Saturday. Our top five is made up of Calero Pompero, who has had barely an issue throughout the event. Taki Katsuta, who has had a puncher. Adrian Formo, who finished the most recent stage, stage 13, Sleeper Warrior 2, on three wheels, because, well, the front left had gone to the point that it was tearing the front left of the car apart. Elfin Evans, who had the same thing happen to the rear left, had, I think, three punches on the day that he's had to stop and change. Then Terry Neville, who had to finish stage 11 in electric mode, lost seven minutes, lost even more time in stage 12, and then only lost a minute in stage 13. After that, it's Gus Greensmith, Oliver Sulberg, Kaitan Kaitanovich, Jordan Serderidis, and then Oit Tanak rounding out the top 10. Tanak two seconds off of Serderidis, which, considering the fact that Oit Tanak didn't finish Friday, and most of that time has come from penalties, it's quite impressive that he's still in the top 10. I mean, Gregoire Munster, I think, has dropped down to 17th. And Espekalapi is in 14th. But all that means is we've had the top 10 allocated. Now their points that should they make it to the end of tomorrow, they will get on the board. Gus Greensmith, well done for him being ill and holding on to 6th and holding 2 minutes over Oliver Solberg and WRC2. But yeah, it just shows the sheer determination of some of these drivers to make sure that they get through just to get those points on the board. Especially the title contenders, the likes of Neville and Tanak. Hyundai's issues, well, for Neville it appears that it could have been the fuel pump again. Which means that the narrative from Sweden that it could have been tactical might not necessarily be true. And then... EP was the gearbox. Tarak, it was a crash. Which was because he got flung up by a poor collision with some of the ground in the stage. Maybe it shows that the WRC game actually mimics real life in some aspects of that. But yeah, it just repeats that narrative that the main thing that Toyota have going for them is that they're reliable. Which they have been for the past couple of years now. Especially since it started being, you know, Hyundai having that one core of the car always fail, and then it was the drive shaft, and now it's the gearbox or the fuel pump. I mean, I remember when Tanak was driving for Toyota, it was always the sub guard. <laughs> but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on all of this. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon, because tomorrow we get a full rally review. Bye for now.